Hey, Richard Beach here from sonicsdate.com. I'm at NAMM 2015 in the rather heavenly Gibson room on the third floor of the Anaheim Convention Center with Niels from Gibson Pro Audio, who's going to talk me through what is a very sexy looking new product, uh, a Les Paul reference monitor. So tell me a little bit about the develop, uh, development of it, first of all, and uh, then we can really get into the meat of it and I can ask you some burning questions. A burning question sounds very good. Hi, hey, Rich. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Gibson Brands booth here at the NAM 2015. Yeah, you just mentioned it, a uh, sexy look. That's uh, pretty much right. Um, and that's actually the whole purpose of this product where we said, okay, we want to combine all these iconic design elements, you know, that Gibson is known for on the Les Paul guitar, yeah. you know, the, the um, arc top design as well as the great sunburst paint. And then we thought, okay, why not combine this with the superior speaker technology? And there's three models going to be available, a Les Paul 4, Les Paul 6, and Les Paul 8. Okay. That's based on the driver size of the woofer. They all feature superior components like diamond-like carbon-coated titanium tweeters. Um, and the cool thing is, you know, we looked at the engineer, the producer, and us, as well as the audiophile fan. People that really like a great listening experience, okay. but also want to craft their music. Yeah. And say, okay, I want something that's really well translating, where it can have a great mix that is working on other systems as well. So uh, we were looking at all these, you know, users and, and that, that demographic and said, like, they all seek this dream for having a reliable reference monitor. And this is, you know, where we said, okay, let's blend this great design elements with superior speaker technology. And that's the Gibson Les Paul reference monitors now. Okay, and I, I'm guessing the Les Paul uh, idea came from the fact that it's a hundred, uh, Les Paul's 100th birthday this year. Is that to coincide with that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly fitting right into his birthday year. Yeah. But the other story on Les Paul is he was the, the one who came first oh, up. Yeah, yeah. Right, and he came up with the first full-body electric guitar, right? But he's also the inventor of multi-track recording. Yeah. So he's basically already bridging the gap, you know, between the guitar world and the recording world. So it's perfectly fitting. We said, let's honor his name, you know, with the release of these new Les Paul monitors. And the idea with these, obviously, being reference monitors, are you hoping that people would just have these in their studio as their kind of number one go-to reference monitors? Absolutely. And and so like, obviously there's, there's studio standards like uh, NS10s from Yamaha. How do these compare in terms of um, like the frequency curve that they're, they're pushing out and stuff like that? Have you gone for anything in particular? Is there any like, you know, you want it to sound like a really honest uh, representation of, of the recording. Right, yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, the people that mix music, that craft music, they want to have a great representation and a reference they can trust and where they know, okay, my mix is going to translate, plus the music that I'm mixing on my ears are not fatigued. So they can work for like five, six, seven hours and still get the right representation of the, of the music and of the mix. And that's actually the purpose. And then you also need to take into account that music over the last 30 years from a whole dynamic standpoint have changed. So speakers these days need to be way more critical when it comes to you know, these little differences in dynamics yeah. through all the compressed material. And these speakers are actually capable of giving you every little cent because of the lightweight cones, the lightweight drivers, and the very powerful amplifiers. So you have a very, very good uh, transient response on these speakers. And so how long was the development process? Uh, it's actually two and a half years. Two and a half so it was, years. Yeah, there okay. it was a long time. But Tiny we are, little tweaks here and there. Right, but <laughs> we, we also, you, we're also also keen on making it right. So if the product isn't right, then we don't go to market. Okay. And so two and a half years, that means that I'm guessing the development on these started before the acquisition of KRK. No. Is that right? No. Was no, that over two and a half started, years ago? It started, it started like right after. Okay. So, so was there any working with those guys? or? Um, I mean, every single screw in that product is crafted from scratch, so there's not a single component that has been leveraged from any other brand. So okay. it's really like a ground-up development where you say, okay, we want to have, that's the vision, this is the idea, let's build like the, the one and only reference monitor that is, as I said, and for, for this demographic of producers, engineers, artists, yeah. but as well as for audiophile fans. Did you work with any engineers or producers in particular in the development of it? Um, yeah, we had a few engineers in, in being involved there as well as producers. We had actually a, a few guys stepping by at AES uh, in October where we had the first, you know, um, public view on these speakers. Yeah. And they stepped by and they said, like, oh, my God, I, I can't believe. And uh, <laughs> it was it was really cool because I, I used a few demo tracks of, of some of these, these producers. And they said, like, well, that's a... It's a great song. I said, like, yeah, I use it for all my demos. And he said, like, yeah, it was fun mixing it. So, <laughs> uh, and what have we got queued up on um, this uh, this door behind us? Uh, that is uh, the, the, new, the new sonar. And I think I would like to hand it over to, to Carlo yeah. here, who can tell you way more about the sonar in particular. Okay. Rich, thanks very much for coming by. No worries. Stepping thanks. by and uh, Thank you. all the info on the... And, and is this going to come through the Les Paul monitors? 
Would when you, like you to hear them? Yeah, yeah, I really would. Maybe we can, you can want to play a little sample. Yeah. I think we have some audio right now. Little Kings of Leon, right? Yeah. Audio may not transfer over good through the uh, camera, but I'm gonna, from, from our end, it's sounding pretty good, right? It sounds great in there. I mean, yeah, I'm in the middle of the room right now. Sort of. I'll take a little step back. It's, that's nice. It's like you're really in the room with us, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're also presenting, we're debuting, just released yesterday, is the new Cakewalk Sonar series software. We've got artist, professional, and platinum versions. Okay. Gibson now owns Cakewalk, really stands behind the company and believes in it, and allowed us to develop what is really, truly one of the most world-class production centers combined with the speakers and the Tascam products. We now have a complete family of recording, you know, software, microphones from Neat. Here we have the brand new series of microphones. These are neat microphones. They're on display here also. So we really put together a whole family of products that a complete recording solution from everybody that's affordable, but also, like Neil said, regarding the monitors on a professional level. Okay. This software comes right out of the box with everything you need to get started in anything, post-production, rock, acoustic narration, podcasting, can handle anything you can throw at it from the ground up. And for more information, just go to cakewalk.com. Download a free 30-day trial, unlimited. Try it out. If you like it, it's worth every penny of the investment. Okay, cool. And uh, Niels is gone now, but uh, I believe from chatting to him earlier that the, the speakers themselves are going to be available from March. Is that right? Shipping now available yeah. from March? This spring. Okay. That's right. This All right, spring. cool. And, and they, are, they sound better than they look. They sound better than they look. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bold claim because they look really nice. You know, if, if you're inviting people into your studio. Well, we have a high standard. Um, you know, and Gibson really maintains that standard, whether it's with their speakers or their recording software. Sonar Platinum here is a flagship DAW. From the ground up, you're guaranteed to have the best recording, mixing, and editing experience possibly out of, a, out of any box. And yeah. this, um, are there any new features to this that we haven't seen before? I'm guessing yeah, the answer well, is yes. Yeah. We have the whole side rack virtual console here. This is all hardware emulation. So yeah, and that, I mean, it we kind have, of has the look and feel more of an analog studio. It really does, because it's also, that, that look and feel will never go away. Because that's how people have learned, that's how people grow, and that's also the kind of workflow people are most used to. So Cakewalk worked very hard to develop not only emulation, but the real feel and look. So when you're working with it, it's an environment that you're very comfortable with. Plus the results are always going to be better than what you expected. Because right out of the box, you're gonna have stuff that sounds really good, easy to use, quick access over, I think it's 21 new virtual instruments, uh, 57 new plugins, unlimited tracks, and world-class MIDI editing and recording capabilities. Great for post-production. We've got some new features like vocal sync, allows us to take one track and sync it to another track, okay. which is nice for lining up dialogue, which is a really big application in post-production today. And uh, again, it's just worth checking out. It was released yesterday, so in our artist, professional, and platinum. Okay. Here under the Gibson banner from so Cakewalk. With those three releases, and I'm guessing you, the intention is to tie up the, the production market for not only bedroom producers, but also you know guys yeah. running studios. This is the kind of age we live in. We're so lucky because whether you're just getting started, for example, you could buy Sonar Artist, which is an introductory level version, but yeah. it's not stripped down. It just doesn't have features that you may not need Okay. for maybe a little over $100 or $100. And it's the same standard, whether you're buying the intro level or the platinum version. Platinum version offers you everything you need to do complete post-production or mixing or editing of any kind of music or narration possible. You don't have to spend a dime outside of that program. Okay. Yeah. And something new I might want to add is a new membership. When you buy the software, you're automatically enrolled in a membership program for a year, which gives you 24-7 technical support and access to videos, tutorials, uh, connections with other users. Yeah. So it's kind of like a real social environment where you don't just buy the software and you're left alone. You're now part of a group of people the other users, yeah. and it doesn't end there. You're always you're as involved as you choose to be. 
So the 24-hour support is that online chat then? It's online and okay. telephone support too. We have okay. some great techni technical support. Uh, because this, these days, you know, if you do get stuck, you're not abandoned. After the purchase, the service doesn't stop there. Sure. It just begins there. Yeah, I mean, and that's what it's really all about. One of the frustrating things, as, you know, particularly with home production, is when you've got a piece of software and you, something's not working, you don't know why it's not working, and, you know, yeah. it's Yeah, and the first thing you probably would do is maybe troll YouTube or something. Exactly, yeah, or go on a forum, right. type, type the questions right. to Google and see if Now, what you could problem. do is, right from the software itself, if you look up here under help, you have an immediate link to what's brand new. And this will bring you to any kind of help you want at any time directly from within the program. For example, a suite of videos. Let's say you want to see how to get the most out of the new MIDI features. Right from the DAW, select videos, then you can choose MIDI features, and you can see what's new. And you can also see what you may not have known is possible before too. So it's really as deep as you want to go with these programs for just one small fee. You know, it's really about the service after the purchase that makes this whole family of products work. Because as I said, Gibson has a very high standard of operation and service to its customers, and it doesn't end after you buy that pro product. It just really begins. And it's nice to be part of a family like that, that supports you and wants to make music, because then it inspires you to stay creative. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, thank you very much for, oh, for chatting to us um, and for giving us your time on the pleasure. first day of NAMM. Sure. Uh, speaking Have of family, fun. thanks to everybody uh, at Sonic State who's watching these videos. You can watch more at sonicstate.com forward slash amped and we will be here every day at NAMM bringing you video and news updates. Thank you very much. Cheers.